Welcome back, friends, for more Homecoming, more Nazi Revisited. Last episode, we got to uh, talk to Kyoji a little bit. We found out that he does the morning paper route. Uh, we helped join him and, and all that fun jazz. And uh, we left the video off going to Shun's uh, for a D&D -D session, apparently. Like, I mean, I think it's called... I forgot what it was called, but it's basically a D&D &D session, so... And since this is a super long event, uh, I had to cut it, cut it in half, so... Uh, for now, let's actually continue and finish up this D&D &D session and see where it goes. Realizing she's been outmatched. Nama tosses her sword to the side and races back behind the doors of the tower. An annoyed expression makes its way to Shin's face. Ugh. She ran from the last three fights we had with her family. Tor gives a chuckle before reaching over and slapping me on the back. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. Hero got her good. We'll finish her off once we get inside. Shun nods and looks down at his notebook, jotting down a few notes. Ah, <sighs> well, the party is about to meet up with Hero, so if anyone wants to equip him with better gear, now would be the best time. I stretch, enjoying the brief intermission. Taro has taken this, uh, taken this as a chance to use the bathroom, while Torihiko and Totsuki have a hushed conversation between themselves. Shun has his nose buried in his notebook, jotting down some notes. I can only assume they're about the upcoming trials we're guaranteed to face. I decide to focus my attention on Shin, who is patiently waiting for us to continue. So Shin. The black cat jolts, clearly not expecting me to speak to him. What is it? I smile, asking the question that is on my mind. When did you suddenly get a taste for... I pause, sweeping my hand across the table, taking uh, taking extra care to not upset anyone's soda or ramen cups. You know, all of this? As I finish my question, Shin relaxes, giving a nonchalant shrug. I'm still not interested in video games, if that's what you're going with this. Where are you going with this? I'm more surprised by his answer than the matter-of-fact way he says it. But that's like sprinting before you can even crawl. The expression that crosses his face makes me wonder if I said something insulting. But he simply gives another shrug. Honestly, I've never seen the connection, though you're not the first to suggest that. Shun said the same thing. He offered to lend me his handheld system, but I just wasn't too into the game. A small wad of balled up paper bounces off Sh uh, Shin's shoulder and rolls onto the table. The two of us give surprised stares over at Source. Ugh, how can you not like Persona 4? I mean... It's basically, bl it's already blasphemy to not like this, like the vanilla game, but I try to give you the golden version. Shun gives an uh, indignant snort. Uh, remind me not, never to take you with me to my cousin Gaku's video game store. Despite the annoyed look on his face, the wolf has a teasing tone in his voice. Wait, Gaku? That sounds familiar to me. Oh. Yeah. Back when I used to play video games with Shun, he would mention Gaku a lot. His video game skills were apparently unmatched. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'll ever get the foo-foos down. A soft chuckle breaks out, out of my thoughts, and I stare at Shin. The cat simply smiles and shakes his head. Well, the mute... Whoops. History time. Well, the music is nice enough, I suppose. Ah, are you almost done, dude? I'm getting bored here. Torihiko, uh, Torihiko's loud voice interrupts Shin's review. It seems his conversation with Totsuki has become a little more energetic. 
The dragon snorts before grinning at Tora. I told you to let uh, let me bring some pop sake. We're going to be having way more fun right now. Uh, that stuff makes my stomach hurt. The two of them continue the discussion at a more reasonable volume. With an annoyed look on his face, Shin sighs and continues. Anyway, it's by pure chance that I even know about this game. My mother found an older uh, edition of Nightwatch in a bookstore somewhere in Yokohama. I actually, I had actually requested the uh, the set of Les Aventures de Tintin. The Le, Le, uh, Le ah fuck, I, my 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 French is like so bad. Sorry, I Le, Le Vent, Les Ans. Uh, Le Vance, uh, fuck, oh, sorry. Uh, I was not prepared for French right now. Sorry. It's my birthday two years ago. <laughs> but, uh, the, yeah. I'm not even gonna try. Sorry, guys. For my birthday two years ago. But the store had some kind of problem trying to import it from France. In all honesty, I kind of think that she just grabbed something large off the shelf. But the mindset, bigger means better. As you can see, this this isn't a game you can play by yourself, so I asked Shun if he'd be interested in playing with me. Ah, oh, come on! We'll be five minutes at most. I'll get my sake. Get a sake. Ah, uh, sake! More like enough sake to get us kicked out when Shun's dad catches you puking in the sink. Shun gives another sigh and gently rubs the bridge of his nose. They were not my first choice to have uh, to have join us. Kyoji and Juichi just didn't have enough time to do their busy club schedules. Koya just outright refused. As for Konosuke, Shin gives a sudden groan and doesn't even bother lifting his head from his notebook as he interjects. Uh, he never shows up on time. I blink, wondering if I maybe misheard. He never? I know he has a reputation for not being on time, but I would have thought things would be different here. Last I knew, he enjoyed playing games like this. Shun simply shrugs, still not looking up from his notes. Nope. In the end, I just stopped asking him if he wanted to play. Instead, I invited Torihiko, and he brought Tatsuki with him. I nod an understanding, though I am curious about something. What about Taro? Hmm? What about me? Taro uh, slips through the sliding door and takes a, it takes a seat across the table. Shin smiles at him and shakes his head. Well, he isn't the new guy anymore. Unsure of what to say, Taro slowly glances between Shin and I. Well, I've been playing for a while. Back in my old school. Ah, there you are. I thought you died in there or something. While Toro laughs at his joke, Taro glances down, clearly looking uncomfortable. I wasn't that long, was I? Toro doesn't seem to, to hear the softly spoken words and winks over at Shin. <laughs> come on, come on, let's do this. We're almost at the end of this campaign, right, Shun? The wolf perks up, glancing up at Tora with a smile. He nods. Oh, yes. Uh, looks like it. Okay, is everyone ready? The children of Amun have all gathered somewhere in the tower. The eve of his resurrection is upon us, unless his children meet their end here and now. I shiver a little and lean closer to Torahiko, speaking in a uh, shushed whisper. Where did Shun learn how to tell a story like that? Shun doesn't seem to hear me, and he continues his storytelling. The party now has two choices. Will they scale the tower and strike down whatever they may find at the top? Tora grins and shrugs, whispering back at me. I don't know, but it's cool, huh? 
I return his grin, before sitting back up and paying close attention. Or will they brave the darkness beneath it and drive the creatures dw dwelling there into the light? A concerned expression shows on Tatsuki's face, and he looks up from his character sheet. Uh, maybe we shouldn't go underground. What if there's no light? While well, Tatsuki's voice voices his concern, concerns, Taro gives a confident grin. <laughs> I bet all the tough fights are gonna be down there, Mr. Uh, Meteora. We'd be missing out on all the treasure and experience. Mm. We all turn our attention to Torahiko as he makes a thoughtful sound. The tiger scratches his head for a moment before looking back at us. Well, if I were... If I were the dead guy... Sorry, I think that's what he said. I gotta change that as, uh, by next episode, honestly. Well, if I were a dead guy... Old God... Shin interrupts, correcting Torahiko before he, he, can, he can proceed any further on, uh, with his thoughts. Tor simply nods before continuing. Uh, if I were a dead old god, I'd sh I'm sure my resting place would be underneath the tower. A smile breaks out across Toski's face. The dragon turns to face me. Uh, what do you think, Hiryuki? We'll follow your lead. He reaches across and places a hand on my shoulder, giving it a gentle squeeze of encouragement. I weigh up the options, but the idea of more combat excites me. Let's go down below. I want to fight some more. My enthusiastic reply gets a smile from everyone. I got a hiccup. <laughs> Tora grins widely as he taps his uh, drink cup down on the table in a symbolic cheer. <laughs> Looks like you've developed taste for a hero. Want to lead the way? He'll get a bigger share of the experience points, right, Shun? Shun opens his mouth as if to talk, but a sudden thought seems to snatch the words away before he can form them. He leans back from the table and taps the uh, blunt end of his pen on his notebook. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend it. Shun gives an annoyed sigh and shakes his head. The monsters that are down there are bound to be very high leveled. Putting Hiroyuki in front of in front would be signing his death certificate. My excitement fades at Shin's words. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Torihiko frowns, balling his hands into a fist. Uh, you don't know that. After all, he beat a boss character in his first fight. Narrowing his eyes, Shin shakes his head. Yes, and that is what in the real world, that's what we in the real, real world call luck. There is a reason why you shouldn't unnecessarily test it. Shin turns to me and drops his voice, but keeps his eyes on my notebook, where my stats are listed. If you really want to lead, more power to you. But I do think you ought to just stay behind me just until you're a few levels stronger. To be honest, he does have a point, but at the same time, the thrill of the fight is hard to pass up. I don't want to regret my decision. Hmm. So, are we going to stay behind Shin, or are we going to do this on our own? Um... You know what? I'm going to risk it. Screw it. I know I'm probably going to pick the, the bad option, but I'm going to risk it. I understand what Shin is worried about, but I'm starting to get the hang of this. I've got this. How tough can it be? Probably very tough. <laughs> Shin frown, uh, Shin's frown returns, and he shakes his head. You've never seen the staff that Shun puts on his hordes. But if you're certain... Tora proudly uh, thumps a fist into his chest. Ah, that's what I'm talking about! Don't worry, dude. I'll cover you. The party has chosen to venture beneath the tower. 
There isn't much light, aside from the random torches lit and left to burn by Amon's children. So, uh, we'll be lost within five minutes. Tatsuki cringes as he says what's on his mind. Torihiko frowns and nods. Uh, I'm getting jumped by everything but the floor. It's called dungeon crawling for a reason, you know? Where do you think it began? A smile comes across Taro's face as he uh, fiddles with his dice. <laughs> That's kind of Shun's thing, Mr. Nishimura. These guys usually don't last very long. Anyway, let's continue. The party descends down a dusty stone staircase. The deeper they go, the quieter everything seems. Soon the only sounds they can hear are their own heartbeats and each other's breaths. You approach the tombs of the old gods, ancient titans of whom the great heroes of ages past gave their lives to seal away. I lean closer to Torhiko again and whisper under my breath, Has Shun been being... Has Shun uh, been playing a, those spirit games or whatever they're called? Once more, Shun is too busy reading from his scrawlings to know our little conversation. After what seems like hours, you finally reach the bottom. A doorway leads to the burial chambers, and in the far corner rests a rotting, blood-stained chest. The tiger gives a small nod and rubs the back of his head. Yeah, though I don't know how he has the patience for them. Sitting upright, Tor raises a hand, giving a smug grin. <laughs> I call dibs on the loot! Shin gives a sudden jerk, before glaring daggers at the tiger. Uh, don't open it, you fool! Torihiko frowns, glaring at the back at Shin. A feeling of unease washes over me. I can't quite my put my finger on it, but something seems familiar about this scenario. Tor, maybe you shouldn't open it. Oh no, I call dibs. That chest is mine. He turns to face Shun, his confident grin returning. I'm opening the chest, Pipsqueak. I can see the narrowed eyes from the little wolf, but rather than get angry, a wide grin comes to his face. Shun wags his, ta uh, Shun wags his tail, eyes gleaming mischievously. I suddenly realize exactly what is about to happen. You lose 50 health points. The shock that displays on Tora's face is priceless. He capes over at Shun uh, in confusion. What? Uh, why? It's a mimic. Shun speaks up, confirming my hypothesis. Tora's still showing a confused expression. What the hell is a mimic? Taro gives Tora sympathetic wince. Uh, it's a shapeshifter that looks like a treasure chest. If you try to open it, the creature will open its mouth and clamp onto you. Shun nods, his tail still wagging happily. Yep, and you need to roll a 13 or higher to escape its bite. Are you ready? With a gulp, Torihiko picks up his dice and nods. Y yeah, uh, let's do it. I can see the hope within Tora's eyes as he rolls, his dice bouncing across his notebook. Damn it! The result is obvious. His seven is nowhere near high enough to escape. Alright, that's 100 health points, uh, points of health gone now. A hundred? Poor Tora looks like his eye, poor Tora looks like his eyes are about to bug out of his head. Taro gives another sympathetic wince. Uh, every failed roll will double its uh, bite damage. Uh, ah! Get off me! The tiger looks uh, pleadingly at Tatsuki, before quickly snatching up the dragon's dice and shoving it into his hands. Surprised, Tatsuki muddles a bit before nodding. Yeah, 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 I, I got you. 
Shun's still clearly enjoying himself, looks over at Tatsuki, giving the dragon a wide grin. You will need to roll twice, once for your actual damage, and the second time to determine whether you hit the Mimic or Torahika. What? It's obvious that uh, Tora wasn't expecting that. He glares over at Tatsuki. I swear, dude, if you kill me, I'm gonna kill you. Tatsuki gulps before giving the tiger an assuring nod. Okay, okay, J just give me a second. Holding his breath, he rolls his dice. Uh, that's a 12. As Tatsuki picks up his dice, everyone leans in, anxiously awaiting his next roll. He gingerly gives it a shake, as if he was afraid to anger it. The moment of truth arrives at any rolls. Ah, 14! Before we can celebrate, Shin's expression suddenly hardens. Torihiko, retreat on your next roll. Sitaro, you're with me. You're Yuki. He turns to me, uh, turns to look at me, and I can't help but shiver. I've never heard this kind of tone in Shin's voice before. It's like someone from a superhero film had taken over my friend's body. Stay back until we've softened it up. I want you to finish it off. I nod, giving a nervous gulp. Leave it to me. Shun stops wagging his tail and uh, scribbles a few things onto his notebook. A few moments later, he looks back up at us. All right. Ryudo, the hunter, has successfully freed Harashi from the jaws of the Mimic. It loses 25% of its total health. Shin looks at his notes briefly, then glances up back, uh, back up at Shun. I will roll for Gutting Slice. He swiftly picks up his dice and rolls it. 10. Shun nods, writing a few more notes before giving a satisfied hum. Mimic is now affected by the bleeding status and will lose 20 points of health per turn. Taro's ears perk up, and he sits uh, fully upright. Uh, I'll, I'll roll for infection. He clears his throat to catch, his, my, catch my attention before leaning close to whisper an explanation to me. So infection chooses one status ailment at random and doubles it. The lion picks up his dice and eagerly rolls it. Fifteen, yes! Shun smiles and nods, adjusting his notes to update the information. Bleeding damage has increased to 40 points of health per turn. He turns to me, giving a happy chuckle. Okay, hero, it's your turn. I scooped up the dice before looking over at Shin. The cat just nods back expectantly. Just stay back for now. Looking back over at Shun, I hold up the dice. What do I need to roll to guard? The wolf looks at his notes, seemingly to be doing calculations in his mind. After a few moments, he glances back in my direction. Anything higher than five? Armed with this information, I take a breath and roll the dice. Alright, a nine. Okay, the Mimic has lost its ambush grapple, so now everyone must roll for a regular initiative. Everyone takes a turn, rolling their dice. Shun rolls a high number, managing to snag the Mimic positioned right in the middle. Shun must have noticed my frustration at the Mimic getting a, a turn before me. He looks at me and gives a reassuring smile. <laughs> Don't worry, hero. It's bleeding pretty well right now. 40 damage per turn is a rather good setup. In my disappointment at my roll, low roll, I completely forgot about the mimic status ailment. Its life is on a countdown timer. I roll for gutting slice again. Shin's voice breaks me out of my out of my thoughts. The cat rolls his dice. <laughs> what a disappointing roll. Before I can see what he rolled, he snatched, snatches up the dice. No point in stacking up any more ailments, just finish it off. 
Tatsuki picks up his dice and roll, uh, holds it up. Uh, I got this. I'll make a triple roll for volley shot. I watch as he rolls, excitement on his face. All right. That, that first one hit thir for 30 damage. Damn it. That one missed. Yes, and that makes 60 damage. Terahiko picks up his dice and looks over at Shin, remembering what the cat had ordered him to do earlier. Uh, I'm gonna retreat before I get my ass handed to me again. The tiger rolls the dice. Did I seriously fail a retreat? Shun frowns, looking over at Tora, who gives a soft wh a whimper. Huh, that isn't good at all. The mimic uses whirlwind claws. The wolf picks up the dice and rolls. Everyone takes 20 points of damage. Taro gives yet another uh, wince on Tora's behalf. Uh, you lucked out. 10 more points and you'd be dead. Tora gives an annoyed groan, burying his face into his hands. Jeez, uh, thanks for the update. On the plus side, it's it just lost 40 points of health due to its bleed. Shun tries to cheer Tora up before glancing over at Taro, who is eagerly await awaiting his turn. I want to roll for Firebomb. He excitedly uh, flings his dice forward, narrowly missing Tora's slumped head in the process. I got a 14! Shun continues to scribble more notes, nodding every few uh, few moments. Ah, that's enough to break past its uh, magic defense. One more good strike ought to do it. Everyone at the table turns to me as I uh, quietly scoop uh, scoop up the dice. It's just my luck. I'd be the last to roll here. If I miss, Tor is as good as dead on the next turn. His eyes rest on mine, as if pleading for me to rescue him. I look at my character sheet one more time before setting on my next move. I'll roll, roll for Koha. I press the dice to my forehead, as if praying, before quickly releasing it onto my notebook. Oh. My. God. A wide grin breaks out onto my face. Twenty! Shun gives a wide grin as I declare my victorious role. Good work, hero! You vanquished the mimic! Torihiko bre breathes a huge sigh of relief. Uh, not today, death. Not today. Tatsuki glances over at Shun, an excited smile on his face. Uh, that, was an, that was a special monster, right? What kind of loot does it have? Shun glances down at his notebook, scratching the top of his head with his pen. Hmm, let's see here. The wolf flips through a few pages of his notebook before finally finding the one he wanted. With an index finger, he traces down a list of treasures he'd written down for the campaign. A wide grin comes across Shun's face as he finds what he was looking for. Well, well, well. It looks like someone finally obtains the Primal Flame spell book. He fixes his gaze squarely on me, his grin widening. Unfortunately, your class is incompatible with these spells. Disappointment rushes through me at this news. I was looking forward to earn some great loot, but as luck would have it, I got something I can't even use. Ah, don't worry though, hero. It's still worth quite a bit of gold. If you'd prefer to sell it later. Otherwise, you could always trade it to someone. My ears perk up at the sound of that. I didn't realize I could trade it to somebody. Question is, should I give it away or keep it for myself? I feel like Shin is like the most responsible. Oh, well, Shin or Taro would be like the most responsible ones for it. I'm probably gonna give it to Taro. He's been pretty helpful so far. 
cast a glance in Taro's direction, thinking for a moment. He's quite familiar with his spells, and if I'm understanding this game right, would get the best actual use out of this book. Taro. Uh, huh? The lion jolts as I say his name, his glance shifting towards me. I take a breath, and after exhaling, I smile. You can use it, right? Would you like to give it a shot later? A confused expression crosses his face, obviously not expecting this. Uh, really? You don't want to keep it for the gold? It's easily worth a completely new set of armor. I shake my head and smile wider, my resolve unwavering. It'd, it'd be way more useful for you to use, Taro. I'm just barely getting the hang of all this anyway. A deep blush comes to his cheeks, and he sh uh, shyly smiles back at me. Uh, thanks, Mr. Nish uh, Nishimura. I really appreciate it. Nama writhes in agony as ba uh, ba uh, ba uh, ba I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce these words. Ah, these names. Dagger twists into her stomach. I curl my tail around myself as I wince, the gory description manifesting itself in my imagination. Ah, jeez. Shin chuckles softly, nodding over at Torihiko and Tatsuki. Uh, it's no worse than what she did to those two. Oof. I hear pitiful whimpers from the aforementioned, but Sh uh, Shun continues on. She lets one last angry howl before falling limp on the blade. Nama now lies with her brothers. A lifeless before our brave heroes. However, the fight was not without its casualties. The wolf grins smugly over at Tatsuki and Torihiko, the two flinch, flinch in embarrassment. Ah, come on, don't rub it in! This game's rigged! Shun ignores them both, clearing his throat. Ryudo, the hunter, and Arashi, the rogue, fall in a battle far below the Tower of Shadows. This is not where their journey ends. Ahem. I flinch as Shin gives me an ex uh, expectant glance. It takes me a moment to realize what he's trying to remind me. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, I brush aside the remnants of my instant ramen cup and reach for the dice I've been sharing with Shun. Um, what's the number I have to beat again for the Breath of Life spell? Taro taps the table, getting my attention. He slowly shakes his head. You only have to roll during battles. Right now, you just pl uh, pay the mana cost. With a nod, I glance down at the numbers I've written, crossed out, and rewritten again next to my stat list. Yikes, that number is huge. Uh, we might have a problem. I can only cast a spell once. Taro smiles and, ho uh, and holds up his pen as if it were an item. Uh, it's alright, I have one phoenix feather left. An annoyed sigh comes from Shin. I turn to see him rubbing the bridge of his nose. Those are worth more than gold. Yet these two have used at least seven between them. I flinch at Shin's harshness, but I can understand his annoyance. Seven is a rather large number of resurrection items to be using. I should probably revive one of them before we get ambushed by something else. Um... Why not, Torihiko? I've got you, Tora. I glance over at Torihiko, who rubs the back of his head and gives an embarrassed smile. <laughs> That's twice I've been flattened today. I'm, I'm really no good at this game. Excuse me. I shake my head and give him a re reassuring smile. Neither am I. I never really played anything like this before. 
Hey, Shun. I'll cast Breath of Life on Ara. My cheeks go red as I lean close to Torihiko. What's his name again? The tiger winks at me and leans uh, closer to me. Arashi. Dragon Rogue. Total stud. My blush deepens, and I look back up at Shun. Right. I revive Arashi the Rogue. Shun scribbles down a few notes and gives a slight nod. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's back on his feet. So, uh, do you come here often? Taro gives a disapproving frown and shakes his head. Keep, please keep this professional between our characters, Mr. Midoriya. Shun, I'd like to use my phoenix feather on Rido the Hunter, please. Shun glances up from, from his notebook and smiles, nodding once again. Okay, with that done, all that remains is the tomb. Although the heroes fought through the catacombs with great haste, they were unfortunately too late. The bodies of hundreds of men, women, and children hang from the ceiling, drained of their very life force in order to feed the slumbering Amun. The party is unable to prevent the vile one's massive, uh, fleshless serpent body ra uh, from raising out of the gaping maw of its cascus, open cascus. Its scream resembles that of a thousand exploding stars and its senses of the mo uh, mortals who have come to vanquish him. I tremble with anticipation as Shun reads from his notes. I'm actually quite excited to be here for the final battle. There is no warrior alive who could judge anyone from fleeing. What could possibly be called the bringer of the apocalypse? To stay is to invite certain death and the forfeit of your soul. How will you proceed? The wolf stares at, uh, stares at us all, as if challenging our resolve. <laughs> let's kick his ass! Yeah! Let's put him right in that coffin! Torihiko and Tatsuki glance at one another giving a determined nod. Tora throws a, last, a fast slap onto Totsuki's massive hand, showing off the most energetic high five I've ever seen. Shin and Taro nod, nod at one another, turning to the rest of the group. I'm inclined to agree with them. I'd like to see just how powerful a fallen cosmic deity can be. Uh, the experience points if we pull this off are going to be ridiculous. A wide smile shows on Shun's face as he stares around the table at all of us. The excitement he displays is contagious, and all of us are eager to win. Okay, everyone, roll for initiative. With our new uh, found with our newfound focus, we all pick up our dice and roll in unison. I only roll a four, but I'm fine with going last if I need to. Shu nods over at me before reaching it for his dice and rolling on behalf of Amin. With a perfect 20, Amin the Vile reacts before anyone sees him coming. One giant paw, stripped of flesh and dripping in gore, crashes into the stone floor. The stone splits, sending the party flying in different directions. The entire party takes... 60 points of damage each. Although he frowns, a look of determination flashes in Shin's eyes. He picks up his dice and begins uh, to shake it. I'll attack at a distance with shield toss. He rolls the dice, squinting as if uh, to use tele telekinesis on it. Ugh, a seven. Shun sh uh, shakes his head. Looking down at his notebook. That's not enough. To deal any damage, your attack bounces off um, and harmlessly. Torihiko picks up his dice and glances over at Shun. Uh, I'll roll with a cleave. I'll roll a cleave. 
Shaking the dice, the tiger releases it, watching as it rebounds off the side of his notebook, hitting his half-empty cup of soda before coming to a rest. Eighteen! Ah, Arashi manages to cut one of Amon's toes to, uh, to the bone. Another primal shriek erupts from its uh, razor-sharp beak. Torahiko gives a satisfied laugh, puffing out his chest. <laughs> Next time I'll take uh, take its entire foot. Sataro, so, it's your move. Taro nods, thinking for a moment, although his confident smile remains on his face. Got it. I attack with fire surge. He picks up his dice and rolls it. Twelve. A frown makes his way to Shun's face, and he shakes his head at Taro. Sorry, so, but Amon is impervious to fire. An eternal flame has raged inside its belly since the dawn of time. The poor lion gives an annoyed scowl and sits back down. Damn it! I have to fight back a giggle as I he hear him curse. I honestly didn't expect something like that from him. Totsky reaches over and places a comforting hand on the lion's shoulder before reaching down for his dice. I'll use... I'll use volley shot. He gives his dice a quick shake, rolling it three times. Two. All right, twenty. And ten. After scribbling down the results onto his notebook, Shun gently taps his pen on the end of his nose. One of Ryudo's arrows meet it meet. Meets its mark in Amon's side. The gargantuan beast falls over the edge of its coffin, creating a shrieking, bloody mess. The wolf looks up from his notebook at me, giving me a nod to signal that it's my turn. I'm honestly not sure anything I do will affect such a high level monster, but I should probably give it a try. I have enough stamina for one low-level heal spell, and that's it. Part of me wants to lean over to Shin and Taro and ask what I should do, but I'd rather not be a burden to them. An idea comes to mind, though. Though I have a feeling, though I have a feeling it won't work. I'll roll for Bash. The way I see it. A dark god that has existed since the dawn of time wouldn't enjoy being smacked by a heavy, heavy wooden stick. Right? I pick up the dice and roll as if my life depended on it. Eleven. I get a pain smile from Shun, complete with, it, with an A for effort style thumbs up. <laughs> Didn't think so. I feel that I'd probably be more useful if I fell back from the battle, throwing health potions at everyone. It'd be a great idea, except that I'm completely out of them. On your next roll, try using search. You might find something in the crypt that we can use. As Shin gives me some advice, Shun's expression suddenly changes. Amon peels itself away from the dirt floor its colossal tail slapping the ground behind it. Bits of gore shoot towards the party. The beast's gnarled beak clicks once uh, and opens, the stench of sulfur permeating the air. Almond, uh. Sorry, guys. Almond begins to heave. The wolf scoops up his dice and rolls. Upon seeing his result, a 13... His brow raises. Shin frowns as Shun clicks his tongue. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Forget searching for anything. Here, Yuki, just roll the retreat. Confusion fills me as I look o back over at Shin. Huh? What's, what's he gonna do? The cat glanced at me, giving a shake of his head. He's charging up some kind of magic. It's a fire sp uh, spell for sure. Did you remember how to, uh, how my own fire spell didn't work? 
Shin's uh, ears perk up as Taro speaks up, turning to face the lion. Fire elemental. You're thinking of combating it with ice, aren't you? A confident smile uh, coming to his face. Taro shakes his head. I got something even better. I just need you to get it bleeding. Shin, uh, Shin purses his lips uh, as if wanting to ask more about the plan, but instead taps his finger once, uh, once on his notebook before taking up his dice. I'll roll for getting slice, please. He rolls the dice, his tail flicking around behind him. 16. Shun adjusts his glasses again, and I begin to sympathize with what he said earlier. Maybe contacts would be easier. He scribbles some notes down before glancing around at everyone. Amon will now lose 20 points of health each turn for the duration of the battle. Torihiko quickly snatches up his dice, eager, eager for his turn. Alright, I'm going to... Wait, wait, wait. We all jump as Tora suddenly calls out. He holds out his notebook ex excitedly. You should roll for this, Mr. Ushima. The lion flicks a few pages in his notebook before sliding it down the table for Tora to read. I can see him mouthing the words on the paper, but the expression on his face tells me he's unsure of them. Uh, is this a real thing? I've never heard of warrior skills using uh, magic points. A surprised expression comes to, uh, to, comes to Shun's face, which quickly turns to one of annoyance. Uh, hold on, what? Taro nods, looking over in Shun's direction, his tail excitingly flickering behind him. Flicking behind him. Uh, it's called Mage Masher. It's something I came up with a year or two ago. Basically, a warrior type character can use it to stop a magic user from casting for one turn in exchange for all of their magic points. I must admit, it sounds like a really cool idea, though judging from Shun's annoyed frown, he doesn't seem to think so. But that would completely break the game! Everyone would just keep throwing elixirs to Torihi at Torihiko. Raising his hands up in front of him, the lion shakes his head. No, no. It only targets one enemy at a time. Shun gives a deep sigh, shaking his own head in, in a disagreement. Any boss ca uh, character based around magic will just immediately go into the trash. Shun continues ta uh, tapping on his notebook but stares up at Taro. I will have to agree with Shun. I'm not sure I'd li like how the game would have to be rebalanced. A slight smile comes to Torihiko, other uh, otherwise uncertain expression, and he gently rubs the back of his head. I don't know, guys. This this could be cool. Like, what if I could, o I could only use it once a session? Suddenly, he stares over at me, and he trace of his look of uncertainty is gone, replaced with his usual warm smile. What do you think, Hiro? You are the guest of honor, after all. I gulp as the other four shift their glances towards me. All I, all I can see is expectation. The hundred million yen question is... Rules are rules, or sh uh, just this one should be okay. Ah, uh, man, I don't know. Ah, hmm. uh, I don't know. Okay, so, um... Why not? One's per session. Screw it. I smile over in Taro's direction and nod. Well, if it's just this once, it shouldn't hurt. I mean, Tora can use it once, right? A white smile comes uh, to the lion's face. He looks at me as if I've given him an early Christmas gift. Exactly! You can't just use it over and over again. <sighs> you. I, I don't know how, how to, like, verbally do that. Fun you. I don't know. 
Sorry guys for like not being able to do that. <laughs> Shin pokes his finger under his glasses in order to rub at his snout. I didn't think he'd have such a hard time saying no to me. The wolf gives a soft sigh and picks up his notebook. <sighs> okay. It might imbalance the game, but maybe I can let it slide just this once. A slight grin comes to, to his face as a thought comes to mind. I mean, you are fighting one of the game's main bosses on your first day. He nods over at me, still grinning. I can't help but grin and nod back. Torihiko picks up his dice and gives uh, everyone a wink. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can land this. Amon's body lurches once more as it launches flames from its mouth. Shun reaches for his dice as Tatsuki claps his hands together in prayer. Please, 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 18! The look of shock that comes to Tatsuki's face is priceless. Shun is simply, uh, is simply gives a wide grin. The flames engulf Ryudo, burning his body to ashes in mere seconds. Tatsuki gives Torihiko a pleading look. Avenge me! He flails dramatically before dropping to the floor. A shocked expression makes his way to Tora's face. I told you to retreat! Now look at you. You're hamburger meat. He glances down at the floor. Where Tatsuki is laying, I can barely see the big oaf over the uh, over the snack-covered table. But am I a tasty burger? A smirk creeps onto my face as I attempt to hold back a laugh. What a silly dragon! Torhiko simply gives a shrug and frowns. Uh, if that's worth dying for, I'm sure. As Torihiko sits back down, Shin looks up from his notebook. Taro does the same. Both of them give looks of sheer determination. It must be low on energy, but we're not out of the woods yet. I just need one more spell. I'll blast a hole through its head. Glancing up from his notes, Shun frowns, fiddling nervously with his glasses. Guys, be careful. You barely have any health left. Shin and Taro wince, but they know what we, ha we all know. It's true, the fight has reached its climax, but nobody is in any shape to see, uh, see it through to the end. Tatsuki's character is dead, and Torihiko's is forced to retreat. Ah! I cry out as an idea, uh, as an idea comes to mind, causing everyone to jump. Tatsuki quickly sits upright. I have an idea! Would it be possible for me to... I pause momentarily, trying to think of how to word my intentions. I've n never really been the type to read rule books, especially not those concerning uh, anything less than an 8,000 yen video game. Shield someone? Like, take the damage for them. Shun frowns, realizing where I'm going with this. He places his hands down on the table and leans closer to me. Well, yeah, but you'll take the full damage no matter what. You won't be able to survive the damage. I shake my head and smile. Slowly, I glance down at the dice. The last person to roll this turn will be me. And so far, I haven't even been able to do much as uh, Tickle Almond. Maybe taking a killing blow for someone right now is the only way to win this. I fall for Shin. It's obvious to me that I need to make the right decision, and I glance over at Shin, my resolve unwavering. I'll, I'll shield... Um, bleh, I don't know Shin's character name, so I'm not even going to bother. From damage. Shin, just roll high enough to finish it off. The black cat's eyes widen as he whips his gaze back in my direction. You really don't have to do that. 
The odds are that one of us will finish him off on the next turn. I give a smile and shake my head in disagreement, folding my arms across my chest. The odds are even higher that one of you will die on Amon's next roll, possibly even both of you. I rub the back of my head in embarrassment, giving a nervous chuckle. Besides, we all know that I won't even graze it, so I should shield one of you as long uh, uh, shield you long enough to finish it off. Another look of shock comes to Shun's face, the wolf gaping momentarily. You're gonna sacrifice all the experience points you'll gain from this? We're talking at least ten levels worth. I shoot a playful glare in Shun's direction and raise up, uh, raise up on my knees. Never make a man repeat himself when he's being heroic. Before anyone can stop me, I snatch up the dice and give it a swift roll. Eight. Is that enough? A frown appears on the little wolf's face as, his, uh, as he checks his notes. Breathing a sigh, he stares over at Shin. Shin's uh, character is completely uh, shielded from any damage dealt by Amon's upcoming turn. Shun reaches for the dice, lifting it into his hand. For a few moments of hesitation, he rolls. I don't need to see the results of the roll. Shun's heavy sigh and solemn expression are more than enough. He jots something down in his notebook before looking back up at us. Amon releases another volley of flames, hitting the party for 60 uh, points of damage. Kala the wizard falls overtaken by the intense heat. Taro gives a visible flinch at the description. Yeah, I saw it, I saw that coming. Shun glances between Shin and I, his ears drooping as he as he looks at me. And Yuki the healer fox sacrifices his life to protect um, Shin's character from death. You... you really did that. I glance over at my friend and nod, a small smile coming to my face. Yeah, but at least you can continue on. A shy smile comes to the cat's face, and he, he, nod, and he nods back at me. Well, I'll just have to win then, for your sake. As quick as, as it was there, Shin's smile is gone, replaced with a hardened expression. He casts a uh, glance over at Shun, the wolf just as surprised as I am by the uh, surprised as I am by the sudden change in mood. I use my final roll to cleave. Shin unfolds his hands from his lap and reaches for his dice. Turning to face me, he pauses before giving me a silent nod and rolling. The dice delicately falls into his notebook, before eventually coming to a complete stop. Nineteen. A look of pure excitement crosses Shun's face as he drops his notebook. A wide smile forming. His character rushes in, slicing at Amon's flesh one, uh, one last time. Amon attempts to evade, but isn't fast enough. Fueled by the valiant sacrifice of his newly departed friend, he puts everything he has into the final blow. The blood lost too much for Amon, and he slumps to the ground, his spirit departing from, from this realm. Before he can react, Shin is suddenly swept by Totsuki and Torihiko, who drag him to the side and give him an excited hug. It looks like something out of a movie, where a sports team is led to victory and brace on the field after their win. Hey, get off me! Okay, yeah, no, seriously, next episode I really gotta fix this up, but... Hey, get off me! <laughs> Dude, you did it! Last man standing, too! A man among... <laughs> oh my god, I almost gave him, like, a... Hey, what's up, no... Like... Sorry. Uh, I gave Tosca the wrong voice. A man amongst men. Uh, that still sounds a little weird, but whatever. 
God, you stink, you idiots! I can't breathe. Despite his protest, there's a slight smile on the cat's face. I think he secretly enjoys the fact that he led the group to victory. While Shin is being con congratulated, Shun and Taro look over at me. Although Taro gives a slight smile, Shun seems less enthused. Well, uh, there goes any leveling you could ever you could have uh, you could have gotten. Cross my arms and pull pull on my most serious face, taking a deep breath. I face my friends and speak the words that appear in my heart. A hero never truly dies when he does for someone else. He becomes immortal in our hearts. Two of them stare at me silently for a few moments. That was... Stolen from Red Hawk. I blink as Shun suddenly glares at me. Wait a second. You're right. Hero, you completely stole that from the Phoenix Rangers. <sighs> a deep blush comes to my cheek. With a soft whimper, I curl my tail around myself. It doesn't make any less true. And so, our surviving heroes... Uh, that... I'm not even gonna bother. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> the warrior and Arashi, the rogue, drag themselves back up from Amun's now permanent resting place. The fog over uh, Relay, 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 some some name has finally arrived. Has uh, finally lifted. Sorry. Their fallen comrades in their arms. They stare up at the sky, wondering how long the peace will last. Torihiko gives a wide grin before uh, flashing a wink in Shin's direction. You know, the upside to surviving uh, a battle with a god? Shin remains silent and just stares back at him. Well? Shin continues to remain silent, although I can see the cheeky gleam uh, within his eyes. Ha! Oh, come on, man! Every medieval fantasy girl will want one of my uh, one of one of my cubs. The the cat glances at me before turning uh, back to face Torhiko. Yes, I'm sure the rogue that ran and hid will be irresistible. Uh, hey, I still live to tell the tale. That should be that should count for something. The tiger suddenly clears his throat and grins over at me. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. You know, I could probably settle for some new armor. Do you mind if I loot your inventory, Yuki? An uneasy feeling comes to me as Shun gives a sudden glare to Torahiko before slapping the table with both his hands. Are you kidding me? He's the reason the party won. Plus, he'll still need to, his gear for next time we play together. Torhigo gives a wide smirk before winking in my direction. Well, it is called role playing, and Arashi is a rogue. Before I'm able to respond, I hear a sudden laugh. As I look in the direction of its source, I see Shin snickering behind his hand. <laughs> A rogue you've insisted on playing like a warrior for this entire campaign. Perhaps that's the reason you die so often? An embarrassed expression makes its way to Tora's face, and he rubs the back of his head with a hand. The tiger stares down at the floor. Yeah, but the thievery skills are so boring. Except for mug and loot. Torahiko stares back at me. All trace of embarrassment gone, replaced with his trademark smile. How about it, Yuki? Wanna help uh, buy my new equipment? With a stare back, a memory uh, memory of the past flashed through my mind. Torhiko and I, we often shared everything. The thought uh, brings up feelings of nostalgia, and I smile inwardly. Letting Tor take my equipment in this game would be no different. 
Then again, Sheen's words struck a chord with me. What if we could play again before I leave? Yeah, so making my decision, I decided to immerse myself into the role. Hands to yourself, thief. I'll be needing this for next time. The words are barely out, and Shun's tail already starts wagging vigorously. He gives an excited smile, and looks as if he's about to break into song and dance. See, I told you! Shun hushes himself by clearing his throat, and pretending to wipe the corner of his mouth with, with his thumb. He gives me the happiest smile I've seen from him in a long time. So, uh, you want me to hang, out, uh, hang on to your character sheet, hero? Yeah. I nod and hand over my character sheet. He gingerly takes it and places it in a protective plastic sheet, storing it safely inside a box. <laughs> While he does this, Torihiko leans, uh, leans in close and nudges me. Hey, I wasn't being serious. I mean, I might loot from these guys, but you? You get a free pass. We all spent, uh, spend time taking empty uh, plastic bottles and, and boxes to different bins beside the Kadori household, making sure to separate the rubbish pro properly. We all exci uh, excitedly chat about our next session and potentially new builds for me to try out. Eventually, though, it was time to part ways. Since I didn't bring anything with me, I followed Shun out onto the porch to bre uh, breathe in the afternoon air. That went oh, that went way too fast. My chest tightens, and I find myself thinking the same thing. Although it took several hours, I still wish it could have lasted longer. Pushing those thoughts to the side, I give a slight shake of my head. <laughs> Maybe you're just having too much fun killing us all. The wolf gives a wide, wide grin, which I return with one of my own. He glances at me, reaching a hand up to my shoulder. Well, yeah, but you did really good for your first time. Maybe if you could stay, we could get you caught up with the, everyone else. I look down at him and flick my ears in interest. An all-nighter, huh? Well, maybe if my grandparents weren't expecting me home. Shun's smile fades. And he glances away from me. No, I meant... Um... Hiro, do you ever think about Minasato? Or about moving back? I blink, wondering where this has uh, come from all of a sudden. As I take a few moments to think, memories flash in my mind. Immense guilt passes through me. The truth is, I've never gone a day without. Uh, well, I haven't gone a day where I haven't thought about this town. I can feel the tears forming in my eyes, and I say the words that are in my heart. Soon, I always do think of Minasato. I turn to face him and see that his eyes are also misty. I think about everyone else too. The wolf stares at me momentarily, before giving a slight smile. Slowly, he pulls me into an embrace. Surprised, it takes, a few, uh, it takes me a few seconds to realize, and I gladly return it. I hope so. He murmurs something softly, though I can't make it out. We release each other from our embrace, and the wolf glances up at me. What about moving back here? What if you guys got part-time jobs and they all just stayed together? Wouldn't that be cool? Video games and manga every day? Like, nothing changed. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. 
Now this is actually like hitting me now. Oh my god. Man, oh man, this is this is tough on me right now. But honestly, I'm I'm, I'm kind of going in with like the gut feelings of Hiroyuki right now. I meet his gaze with my own, a wide smile breaking out across my face. That would be a dream come true. Wolf continues to smile happily at me. I know it's just a dumb thought, but. I really want to keep you close this time. His smile becomes smaller, his voice softening. He pauses momentarily as if trying to think of the right thing to say. We've always had fun together, but today has been more fun than I can remember. Shun's eyes dart away, and he leans against the porch to support Beam. He stares out at the beautiful sunset seeming content to just watch and listen to the chirping of the cicadas. I watch him for a few moments before turning to gaze at the horizon. It really is more beautiful than I imagined it would be. I used to take every everything for granted, but but now being back here in this moment, it truly makes me realize just how much I've given up over the last 5 years. Maybe I could go back and stay with you instead. The two of us are interrupted as we hear the front door open. Our friends step through the doorway, Tatsuki uh, looking a little worse for, for wear. Ugh, I think I ate too, my, uh, too many cookies. Uh, my stomach hurts like hell. Torihiko gently uh, supports the dragon, patting him on, it, on the back. Getting a little old there, huh? In a surprising turn of events, Tatsuki doesn't protest. Instead, he simply sighs tiredly. Oh, maybe. A squeamish look comes across Shin's face, the cat glancing away from the groaning dragon. We should probably hurry, for Tatsuki has an unfortunate incident in front of Shun's house. With all of us in agreement, we say our farewells to Shun. I follow the others up the driveway, stopping to glance back at the wolf. As much as I'd like to stay and talk, my grandparents are likely back, back home by now, and it wouldn't be polite to come home too late. See you later, Shun. I wave to him, and he waves back. However, I can tell the smile on his face is half-hearted. All right, so I hate I, I wanted to finish up uh, August fourth, and I know it's almost over, but I am gonna stop here since we are going way over time. So honestly, that was really cool. Just how like I never really experienced like a D and D session in a visual novel, so that's actually really cool. I really like that event, though. I'm a little weirded out by the fact that Shun doesn't offer. Um, uh, like, um, roles to, like, revive yourself, you know what I mean? Like, like, saving throw, like, doing, like, you know, life-saving throws and stuff like that. Because I know, like, in campaigns I would, I would do, like, if you died, you had, like, the saving throws, um, to save your life and all that. Um, but, I mean, even if you survived, you'd be unconscious and all that, but it's just interesting how that works. <laughs> But yeah, no, Shun's uh, D&D sessions are very brutal, as I can kind of tell. Um, honestly, one thing I definitely really like about this is that um, is the conversation with Shun about how he kind of misses Hiro and how he kind of doesn't want Hiro to leave. I actually remember that, like, in, like, the OG. Uh, I remember, I think it was, like, one of the first couple of days, and if you hang out with Shun for the day... It ends with him like kind of crying and being like you're gonna leave us one day aren't you i'm gonna miss you like i want you to stay and it was very melodramatic and very like you know kind of awkward and i kind of liked how like it was written in this reimagining where 
it just feels more oh I just accidentally off uh, I accidentally held on to my key and it wanted me to like ask for sticky keys <laughs> anyways uh, but yeah no like I think I like the way they handled it here in the reimagining because it's kind of like one of those things where it's not like a, a melodramatic thing where it's like you're gonna leave me you know uh, it's more like it's just kind of like a very calm but also emotional moment you know just knowing that you really don't have a whole lot of time left with someone that you genuinely care about and I don't know I just like the way it was written so that said next time we'll finish up August 4th and of course enter August 5th and uh yeah I'll see you guys next time bye guys <laughs>